Amen. Thank you, Victor and Holly, for that beautiful uh, prelude this morning. Well, and welcome everyone to our fourth Sunday of Advent worship service on this Christmas Eve day. Uh, there's been a lot of communication and uh, jokes about uh, uh, what uh, what do we say this morning for worship because it's you know it is still the fourth Sunday of Advent, but it's also Christmas Eve, so I, I think a Merry Christmas is appropriate for everyone, and it's a great joy uh, to be with you this morning and uh, here in person and online, uh, and I thank you for everyone who's taken a moment to sign in here uh, at the back tables and everyone who's been checking in uh, on, uh, online. I see John Fisher and uh, Kathy uh, uh, Calavetti and others online with us this morning. So welcome. It is great to be worshiping together with God today. Uh, if you have a prayer request that you would like lifted up during uh, worship today, if you're here in person, you can use one of these pink prayer cards uh, and put that in the offering plate uh, later in the service. And uh, if you're online, you can put your prayer requests in the comment sections and we'll get those as well and lift those in prayer. Thank you to everyone who's been giving to the life of the Church of the Pines through your gifts to God uh, and allowing us to continue in ministry and do wonderful things together. Uh, and so we greatly appreciate that. There are many ways that you can give your gifts to God. Uh, and uh, one of the ways you can just go to our website and click on give and make a donation and gift to God to, to the church there. Uh, also want to lift up, speaking of giving, uh, we're going to be starting something pretty special in the life of our church. We're... Uh, uh, in January, we're starting a new mission focused to address the issues of food security in our community and throughout the world. And we're going to have a really fun offering uh, throughout the year. Every, uh, every first Sunday of the month, we'll be collecting a, a loose coin offering in a fun way for us to uh, uh, grow in our awareness and uh, the ways that we can uh, participate in uh, making sure that all of God's people have uh, the food that they need. Uh, and so be looking for uh, change for hunger in the coming weeks and be ready on January 7th with your, uh, with your coin jars uh, and uh, to share those with God. I want to say thank you to everyone who has shared our beautiful poinsettias for us this Christmas uh, Eve uh, and, and worship time. It is beautiful. I can see behind me in the, in the screen, and it, it looks marvelous. So thank you all uh, who, um, who have donated those uh, flowers for us today. In your bulletin, there is an insert with a, a thank you of everyone who's uh, given poinsettias in memory or honor uh, of them. We do ask that you wait to take your poinsettia and tell after the 7.30 service so everyone can have, can enjoy uh, the beauty uh, that is shared uh, today. Uh, if you, um, and all of them are labeled, and if you want someone to grab them for you after the 7.30, please, uh, please do that. But we greatly appreciate that. Our Christmas Eve services today are at 4.30 and 7, uh, and they will be on Facebook as well so that you can, you can worship however you can today. Uh, and just also just continue to take a look at the bulletin, the bulletin boards all around for all the upcoming activities in the life of our church. There is a lot going on, so uh, lots more information. But let's say uh, take a moment of prayer quickly before we begin our time of worship together. Wonderful God, we come together on this most holy day, a day that we remember your great love for us, that you came into our world. As we eagerly anticipate your birth, we are excited to be in your presence here and now. God, we pray that you will take delight in our offering of worship today and fill us with your love and grace. In your name we pray, amen. I invite you to stand as you're able and join in our call to worship as found in the bulletin or up on the screen. <clears throat> we light this candle as a symbol of the Prince of Peace. This is us, your Holy Spirit. Prepare us for Make us ready for the coming of Jesus 
our hope and joy. And I invite you to remain standing as you're able and join in singing the Advent song found on page 2090 of the small black hymnal or up on the screen. And we'll be singing verses 1 through 4. And I invite you to be in a spirit of prayer with me and join in our opening prayers found in the bulletin or up on the screen. Let us pray together. Ever present God, you taught us that the night is far spent and the day is at hand. Grant that we may ever be watching, searching for the coming of your Son. Save us from the undue love of the world that we may wait with patient hope for the day of the Lord, that when he shall appear, we may not be surprised through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
And now I invite any ch children we have with us online this morning uh, for a, a special time. I know, kids, that you're pretty excited. I know that my kids are excited for tomorrow morning, right, to get to be able to finally see what's inside all of those Christmas presents that, that uh, you're going to be blessed to get uh, tomorrow on Christmas. I know uh, I always wondered what it could be uh, and was so excited. That anticipation and that curiosity of what presents I was getting as a kid was always something that just drove me crazy on today of, of all. It always seems like today takes about five days to get through. Uh, and uh, as a pastor, that's the same thing. It's like, whew, a lot to do on Christmas Eve. But you know, kids, I hope you can just for a minute think about how curious you are. What could those gifts be? How, how anxious are you to really find out what's inside? And, and hold on to that sense of curiosity. Because sometimes when you, you get old, like me uh, and other people, you know, we kind of give up on curiosity. We kind of, ah, we've, we know it all, we've seen it all, and we kind of let that sense of curiosity go. You know, I remember too as a kid on the, on the school bus riding home, uh, just the, the route that the school bus took, it, it had to go around uh, this, this big um, forest area that was right next to my parents' house, but we had to drive around it a couple of times to get there to be able to, to when I got dropped off. And one of the roads that we went on that went by this crossed an old railroad track, and I could see down that railroad track just a line of water. There was a creek, a stream that crossed that, and I remember just the, the stories and the wonder of what that stream was like. So much so that I remember finally getting enough courage as a little boy to get off the school bus at my house and put on my, my, my play clothes and I took off into the woods to find out what that stream was, what, how it went and turned. And, and I was rewarded for my curiosity, kiddos. I found a small little waterfall of this stream falling into Lake Superior. And, and I just remember that sense of wonder and curiosity that sometimes we lose. And I hope that you hold on to that because we're going to hear a story in, in the scripture in service today about some grown-ups like me and others who they are curious people and they found a great reward of their curiosity and they never gave up on their curiosity and they found the baby Jesus at the end of a long journey and were blessed by it. So listen to the you know listen for these people how curious they were and keep that sense of wonder and curiosity in your own lives for as long as you can kiddos okay let's say a quick prayer Wonderful God thank you for the great mysteries and wonders of this world that keep us questioning and, and curious about what's around the next bend or what's inside that brightly wrapped present but thank you most of all for this great mystery of your love that we remember and celebrate in the birth of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. May we always have a heart that keeps asking questions. In your name we pray, amen. Thank you, kiddos, for, for your time. And now I invite us all to stand as we're able and join in singing Angels from the Realm of Glory found on page 2020 of the large blue hymnal or up on the screen.
may be seated, and I invite John Rosh to come and share our scriptures for us this morning. Thank you, John. Good morning, all. Isn't the uh, altar area absolutely festive and beautiful with all the flowers? Um, you know, this is really an extraordinary day. Not only is this the Lord's Day, which we worship, but later on this afternoon, we'll also be celebrating the birth of our Lord. Uh, that doesn't normally happen on the same day, so it's kind of an exceptional situation today. Okay, the reading today is Matthew 2, chapter, uh, verses 1, uh, my goodness, this is difficult to read. <laughs> Chapter 2, 1, anyway, verses 9 through 12. <laughs> we'll get it straight yet. In, <clears throat> excuse me. In the time of <coughs> King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who was born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them we met the, the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child was Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country via another road. So ends the reading. Thank you, John. <clears throat> well, we continue in our look at the nativity, the advent, the, the Christmas story, the birth of, of Jesus, and looking at some of the, the side characters who, who we can find incredibly relatable, that we can find many truths about ourselves and, and what God uh, wants us to have. And, and this week we, we heard, it's part of the same passage that we heard last week, uh, the story in Matthew of, of this interaction between these, these wise men from the east and King Herod. And, and last week we focused on Herod uh, and, 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 and how he, the role that he played and the role that we all play in, in Christmas, in uh, the, the birth of Jesus, that we all need Jesus to be born and to come into the, our lives to, to redeem us as well. And today we're going to take a look at these, these mysterious wise men and what they have for us and how they can help us this Christmas and, and every day of the year. Uh, and I remember as a kid thinking the wise men were great because they were the reasons that we got presents on Christmas morning. But actually, that's not really the, the whole part, you know, why, why we give gifts in, uh, in Christmas. You know, the, how the wise men give gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And I also remember as a, as a young man and, and a young, uh, uh, young preacher, uh, you know, that most of what we talked about, whenever we talked about the wise men, were always the gifts. Because there were too many questions. There were too many things that we didn't know about these wise men or magi or kings we, we call them all kinds of different things, and, and we're just not quite sure who they are. There's just not much in the Bible to tell us where they came from, how many of them they were. Were they kings? Were they magicians? What, what were they? We don't know. And then there's all kinds of things that we make up when we don't know the answers, right? Uh, in fact, you can find in, in all kinds of different uh, literature and even some, some sermons that you can find online, you'll find that 
They're talking about their names. That all that they've got three names for these for these men. We're not even sure if they were men, probably, but then there's no real specific thing in the scriptures that identify them by, by gender, let alone their names. But we've come up with names. And in fact, you can, if you look, you can find that there might have been a fourth who got lost along the way and had quite some misadventures. Uh, but these are all things that we've made up because we don't know the answers. That we look at this story of, of these visitors from the east and we wonder. There's a mystery there. There's a void of knowledge and, and we need to do something. That sometimes when we have that, that question, that mystery, it causes us to, to get curious and to wonder and have great stories in our minds. And some of them can be really neat. Some of them can be weird. And some of them can be close to the truth, but all of them can help us get closer to God. And that's what I hope we can do today by taking a look at these unlikely visitors to Israel. Now, I have to admit that there, you know, this, this uh, past Advent season, we've done a, a Bible study led by our, one of our lay leaders, uh, Venus Hilgart, uh, on, on, based on the story of the Grinch. And in one of the weeks, uh, the author and presenter of this, uh, of this book and this study talked about how the, the wise men came, and he's talking about the wise men and this and that. And then he says, without a, a, a moment of doubt or uncertainty, he, he speaks as if, if it was a known fact that the, that the wise men represents the, re, the repentance and the redemption of Babylon. And Babylon was in the Old Testament one of the great enemies of Israel, of the people of Israel. And Babylon even uh, comes in and defeats the, the southern part of Israel and, and destroys Jerusalem. The, Babylon will, will take generations of people out of the promised land and into exile in, in the northeast in Babylon. And they will destroy the temple and, and it's almost the end of God's people. Much of the uh, latter part of the books uh, of the Old Testament have to deal with the exile. Almost all of the prophets in the, uh, in the book in the Old Testament talk about our prophecies about the Babylonian exile and how God will be with his people through that and restore them. So Babylon is huge and they're the big bad guy in the Old Testament, just as bad as Egypt was in the book of, e of Exodus. But I had never heard that idea that the wise men represented Babylon. So I, I said that to the class. I'm like, wow, <laughs> that's news to me. That's something fresh that I've never heard about. And that was exciting. So my curiosity got, got piqued. And so I did a little bit of research on why why people might think that the wise men in the story of Matthew represent the, the redemption of Babylon. And it comes down to, from my relatively short research, my, my curiosity on this was quickly satisfied, uh, in that in the book of Daniel, in the Old Testament, Daniel was one of these young men, uh, young people from Israel who was taken from uh, from Jerusalem and, and into exile. And Daniel, of course, uh, is, he had lots of adventures in, in Babylon, in exile. He, he and his friends uh, uh, got into trouble by being faithful to God. Daniel got thrown into a lion's den and, and his, uh, his three friends got thrown into a fiery furnace and they all survived by the grace and the power of God. And, and through Daniel's gifts, uh, spiritual gifts of God, being able to interpret dreams and, and prophesy the, the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, made Daniel a high-ranking official in the Babylonian empire. He made Daniel a, what the Hebrew calls, could be translated into a couple of different things, a wise man or a magi, someone in the rank of Babylon that 
was an advisor high in the government. So then when that word shows up in Matthew, although not in Hebrew, in Aramaic and Greek, that's where we get the idea that maybe, maybe these people who journeyed so far to see Jesus came from Babylon. I believe it, but I'm not sure. I don't know. There's still too many questions about it. And while we don't know all the answers of what we can, of, of who these people were, what their names were, how many of them were, we assume there were three because there were three gifts, but there could have been one, could have been two, there could have been 15. We don't know. And while there's much we don't know, this story, if we look at them, can really tell us some things about ourselves and our relationship with God. So let's take a look at some things that we, we can, by just looking at the story itself, that we can figure out about these mysterious visitors from the East and what that might mean for us. First thing that we can tell is that these three, or whoever, how many ever they were, these, these people, these wise men, these magi, they knew something about the Jewish faith. They knew something about God and about the Jews. They had some information. They were not complete strangers to, to this. They didn't just look up into the star and say, oh, there's something there. And that, you know, they, they, they weren't completely unknowledgeable. They had some information about the people of Israel. Enough so that they knew that there were prophecies. They knew that there were things, there was a prediction, there was, there was a promise that a significant king would come to Israel who would be a Messiah, a savior, a deliverer to the people of Israel. But also when we look at this text, while they knew something, something that by just looking in the night sky and seeing this, this weird star, we won't get into the star too much today, that they, oh, this must be in reference to what we know. But it raised questions in their minds. Because they, while they knew something, they didn't know everything. And so they travel from where they were, the east, unknown east, to Jerusalem. Where else would you go if you wanted to know more about the Jewish faith at that time? Go to Jerusalem where the temple was. Go to where the king of Israel is. Go to where the, the chief priests, the highest uh, and most skilled and knowledgeable people about the, the faith of Israel go. They, they went there to find answers to their questions, to what they didn't know. They were curious about it. They wanted to learn more about what they didn't know. And that's pretty, something pretty powerful when we stop and think about it because we all know things about God, right? We all know things about our faith. But do we know everything? How do we handle the things that we don't know about our faith? Do we tuck them away? Or, like the wise men, and here's the second thing that we can take, that we can learn from them, is that they take action on what, both on what they knew and what they didn't know. They, didn't, they weren't content to just say, oh, well, I know something about that, but I'm not going to ask any more questions. I'm not going to try to learn on that. They went off on a journey to do something, to learn more about it. Now, for us who can do research, you know how I did research on, uh, on how, why we think they might be from Babylon? Right here, palm of my hand. I had the, the world at my fingertips. It was not a long or hard journey for me to satisfy my curiosity about 
what I had just heard. But the wise men, the magi, they had to, to, to plan. This was not something simple to do. Wherever they came from was not really close to Israel. They had to travel a great distance at a time that traveling a great distance was risky. Took time, thought, resources, and was not a simple undertaking. But yet they were willing to do that. To continue to to learn more about what they had already done. I mean, that's a sense of curiosity inside of them that, that is compelling, isn't it? How often, like I said with the kids, do we let that sense of curiosity go? When we have a question, we, we don't fully understand, do we, oh, I'll, just, I'll just hold on to what I know, and I won't ask that question. I'll just let it go. Might not be worth it. I'm definitely not going to spend a whole lot of time and energy and money to learn about it. Right? We often let that curiosity go, but we see in the Magi, the story of the Magi, that they let that sense of curiosity and wonder in their lives drive and compel them to take action. The third thing that we can learn from the Magi for ourselves today is that while they were excited to learn, they were always open to change. They were open to change. When they encountered Herod, when they encountered the Holy Family and the baby Jesus or the toddler Jesus, because also, the best we can tell, they probably got to Bethlehem two years after the birth. Okay? That's why Herod killed all the two-year-olds in Bethlehem when the wise men left. It took a while for them to get there, but they were open to change. When they learned something about about this, it transformed their lives. They, They allowed what they learned from their curious questions to transform how they thought and how they they lived their lives. And probably one of the the greatest lines in the Bible is they left to their home country by another road. What they learned in encountering Jesus, the Holy Family, what they learned on this journey about whatever they set off to learn changed them. They let new information, new experiences, new answers to their questions shape them and change them. That's a challenge in and of itself, isn't it, for us? It's easy to be content with what we know and what we experience, especially when it comes to faith. It's easy to just listen and hear. Oh, yeah, it's nice. You know, have you ever wondered why it was the Jew, you know, the, the people in, in, in Israel that time, why they weren't all flocking to Bethlehem? <laughs> I mean, here they are. They were people who grew up in this faith. They had heard from the time that they were child, everyone heard the prophet Isaiah speak about Bethlehem. Heard about the the stem of Jesse. All references to David and the Messiah. They all heard the promises of God's Savior coming, but not one of them asked the questions that these three or more or fewer strangers asked. 
Not one of them went on the journey that they went on. Not one of them had their lives changed in that encounter with a holy family. Brothers and sisters, when we listen to the story of the wise men, it's a challenge to us. It is a challenge to us to stay curious, to look at ourselves and acknowledge that we know a lot about the story of our faith. We know a lot about the story and the birth of Christ and what that means. You might even be able to, to, to rattle off some of the weirdness and, 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 and bizarreness and the depth of God's love in, in, in talking about the understanding of the incarnation. But we don't know it all. What questions do you have about our story? Our faith. What questions do you have about the birth of Christ? What things do you think you shouldn't ask, you shouldn't wonder about, because you should just know it, right? I'll be honest. I went to seminary with a question I didn't think I should ask, and I was blown away when a professor started talking about the virgin birth. And whether or not it was necessary. Think about it. Is that what this all depends on? Mary's virginity? Or is there something else? Is that something we've added? But I was afraid to ask a question that I should have been asking for a long time. What questions about our faith, about this story do you have? They're not bad. They're not wrong. Ask them. Don't be content to just stay at home and not ask the question. Go on the journey to find God in these questions. Whenever you have a doubt or a question about God, and if you go to God to that and ask it, it might take a while, it might take effort, but that's what we hear in this story. That willingness to act and to go where it's not easy to find the answers will always find us at some point face to face with our God and a new understanding. And most of all, brothers and sisters, God is always moving, always going, always doing, always revealing more of God's self to us. As we hear the story of the wise men today, may we always be open to be transformed anew by the power of God's presence in our lives, in our world. May we never let go of the curiosity that drives us to know God more, to experience God's presence intimately and powerfully, and to be moved to, to go on life in another road. Amen. As we ponder this story and, and how God can can do new things in our lives and the questions we might have, a way that we have to respond to God is by giving of our gifts and our offerings. So I invite our ushers to come that we might give ourselves to God this day.
O oh, most amazing and mysterious God, we gather today in anticipation of one of the greatest mysteries of all. You, the eternal creator, becoming us, a human being, born like us. It is the greatest mystery, God, and we stand together today in awe of it and our desire to know you more because of it. We offer ourselves and these gifts to be a part of that journey for us and for all, that all might experience your love and life for them. In your name we pray, amen. You may be seated. And we have a, a few joys and concerns to uh, lift up uh, this morning. Uh, first, uh, Kathy Calaventi is asking for prayers uh, for her grandson, Miles, who was uh, premature and is in the NICU, uh, but hopefully uh, will be able to come home tomorrow. So we pray for Miles and his family, uh, for his health and his, <clears throat> his journey home. We also want to lift up Karen uh, and Joe Aguido uh, as Karen prepares to have ke uh, start chemotherapy in January. So we pray for Karen and for Joe in this time. Uh, and uh, Debbie Palmiter is uh, sharing the joy uh, of uh, our church for Pastor Mark and for Mary and for everyone uh, and for, uh, for our church family. Uh, and uh, prayers for... Um, Katie and Jenny uh, Black and her family who have uh, um, cancer uh, and for those who are in need of Christ's love to come uh, today. Uh, with that, we'll have our prayer time this morning. We'll start in prayer and then I'll, I'll lift our prayer concerns uh, and joys and then we'll have time for prayer, uh, personal prayer, and then we'll close in the Lord's Prayer together. But let's be in a spirit of prayer together today. Wonderful God, again, we thank you. We thank you for this opportunity to gather together as friends, as a community of faith, and for the promise you've made to be with us. We thank you for your spirit that connects and unites us here in this place and, and all over as we gather together. God, you are a mystery to us. And this Christmas season and celebration of your birth is a great mystery to us. May we never lose that sense of curiosity that we see in the wise men today. May we be inspired to ask the questions that drive us forward, to know you more. We know that you will never disappoint us when we are willing to make that journey. May we not just celebrate your birth once ago, thousands of years ago, but may we celebrate the newness and the freshness of your ongoing presence with us every day. Lord, we pray for the things that we we hold in our hearts tonight. We pray for those whom we have named. We pray for Miles and for his family as they are so eager for his life. We pray and thank you for his time in the NICU 
and that he'll be able to go home soon. God, we pray for Karen and Joe as as Karen begins treatment for cancer and chemotherapy. And we just pray that you'll put your hand of healing upon her. Be Be with Joe as he goes through this with her. Strengthen them. And show us how we can be a part of that journey with them as well. And God, we are so grateful for all the things that you have blessed us with. And we thank you for this community of faith in which we feel your presence and nurtured and growing. And God, we pray for those who need to feel your love this time and this time. Make yourself known to them in a real way. And Lord, we pray now the prayers that we lift to you in our silent hearts. Now let us pray as Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able and join in singing the wonderful song, We Three Kings, found on page 254 of the large blue hymnal or up on the screen. And may as we sing this song, may its curiosity and its wonder lead us always to be seeking to know more of God.
brothers and sisters, we are blessed this day and every day to be loved by a God of mystery who always has something more for us to experience, to know, and to learn. May we go forth today seeking to know God more, to answer, seeking answers to questions, and journeying together, sharing the love of God with all. Amen.